Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. November last year, GoScript released version 9.26 and today Travis Ormandy with Google did release an advisory detailing some remote code execution vulnerabilities in GoScript. Now, if you're not familiar with GoScript, GoScript is an open source PostScript interpreter and uh, well postscript is a fairly complex language actually travis's uh, post goes into some detail in how for example functions are being defined in this language and this latest version of uh, GoScript uh, doesn't protect uh, this correctly so this is how remote code execution can happen travis did also offer proof of concept code and it could be exploited via various tools that are commonly used to look at PostScript documents. Now you may say, hey, I don't use PostScript and I don't use GoScript. Uh, well, the problem is that GoScript is sort of one of those basic libraries that's used to parse these documents, often also used by security tools and such. So I wouldn't count it out even if you are not really familiar uh, with GoScript. You may be using it as part of uh, some third-party tool and this third-party tool may expose you to these exploits. A patch hasn't been made public yet, but Travis did offer some pull requests to the GoScript project that should fix these vulnerabilities. And Dutch researcher Dirk Jan Molema did come up with an interesting way to combine three known vulnerabilities to actually leverage access to Microsoft Exchange to get full domain admin control. Like I said, it's really sort of three problems that are being used here, but probably the most critical part is that Exchange does actually use quite high privileges in its Active Directory domain. Exchange uses usually the Exchange Windows permission. Now this group then has a right DAGL access. What that allows you to do is to actually access Active Directory and also to sync it with external Active Directory servers. So if an attacker has access to Exchange, then the second vulnerability that they can be using to actually take advantage of these elevated privileges is to do the NTLM relay attack. That's where the attacker gets in between the user, in this case, the Exchange server actually, and then actually relays the LDAP authentication. And with this, the attacker can then lock themselves into Active Directory using the Exchange server's privileges and then trigger the sync operation, which then can be used to actually replicate credentials from the attacker machines back to Active Directory. So the attacker will then be able to essentially push updated passwords and such uh, to the domain controller. And with that, of course, the attacker can get full access to the particular domain. Durkian did publish uh, tools to actually conduct this particular attack. He also offers a number of mitigation steps that uh, you can uh, perform in order to not be vulnerable uh, to uh, this attack. First of all, of course, removing these unnecessary high privileges uh, from Exchange, but then also enabling LDAP signing to avoid some of these man in the middle and relay attacks. And remember how Apple earlier this week came out with new versions of iOS. If you need more reasons to actually apply this update, well, there is now a proof of concept available for a vulnerability that allows a remote jailbreak of an iOS device. The vulnerability was made public by Chinese researcher Shi Hyun Jiao, and he works for Chihu 360's vulnerability team. And he did release a proof of concept exploit, but not the full jailbreak exploit, but a lot of detail that should help a skilled exploit writer to actually finish the proof of concept and arrive at a full jailbreak. So this is really important because an exploit like this could be used by anybody who has some kind of access to the network that the phone is connected to, whether that is Wi-Fi or whether that's the cellular network. So this could then be used to actually root the phone, install 
all malware without the user actually knowing about it and without any real user interaction. And Cisco released a number of updates uh, today and only one of these updates is labeled as critical and that's a buffer overflow vulnerability in Cisco's SD-WAN solution. Now this can lead to arbitrary code execution but could also just be used as a denial of service. And well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.